Hello, what's up guys and welcome back to the first satisfactory video of the year and this time we're looking at the Train vs Conveyors Mythbusters in much greater detail as requested by you guys. Now if you do find this video helpful be sure to hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, special thanks for this video goes to our two Discord moderators, Loeffel and Sam Weris, as well as one of our subscribers called Adam for working hard on a detailed comparison chart between trains and conveyors. Now, in this video, we will be doing several tests comparing how distance, curves, elevation and price compare against the Mark III and IV conveyors, as well as slightly covering the Mark V. Now the first three tests will be along a relatively flat, straight track at short, medium and long range. We will then test the medium range twice more at 100 meters further away and at 200 meters further away. And in doing so, we can work out the approximate throughput loss per 100 meters on the track. Now to make this a fair test, we shall start the timer when the train leaves the first station and stop the timer upon its arrival back. We will then divide the number of items received by the time the journey took in seconds, then times by 60 to find out the throughput per minute. So let's get started. Now the short distance station accumulated a total of 9,600 items over three journeys, which is 100% of transportation available. However, the station was filling up only just in time. So any length of track shorter than this over time will reduce the efficiency of the throughput. Now it took 438 seconds to complete this, which if we divide the 9,600 items by seconds, we'll have a throughput of 21.917 items per second, or 1,315 items per minute. Now after the tests, I've noticed that it does actually take a minimum of 300 meters of track for a station to refill completely with full Mark V conveyors. So that's something to bear in mind. Now, looking at the medium range doing the exact same test, it took the train 573 seconds to transport a full load, which means we have a throughput of 1,005 items per minute, making it faster than the Mark V. However, we can see exactly how long distances affect the throughput of a train. So the longer the distance, the more time it takes for the train to return to the point of collection, which thus reduces the overall throughput. Now next we have the long distance test, which you can see from this map is considerably further than the previous test, and the total distance took 1,155 seconds to transport a total of 9,600 items, which gave us a measly throughput of 72.18 items per minute, which is actually only just faster than the Mark 1 at this distance. So with that in mind, let's look at firstly how much 100 meters affects the throughput of the train and we will do then and we will then do this at a further 100 meters to see if we can find an average reduction to throughput per 100 meters. So comparing the medium distance which had a throughput of 1005 items per minute the first 100 meters achieved a throughput of 945 items per minute. Now at this point, I would like to point out that we should give a 10% margin for human error, but it would seem that we are losing exactly 60 items per minute per 100 meters. Then after the 200 meter mark, we discovered that the throughput dropped to 897 items per minute, which is a loss of just under 50 items per minute throughput, which suggests on a straight flat track that the throughput drops approximately on average 55 items per minute per 100 meters traveled, making the shorter the journey more efficient to throughput providing they don't exhaust the train station's input. Now we should now look at 
a mixed track in terms of height and curves. Now this will obviously take longer to achieve a lap due to the curves and elevation slowing it down. However, what are the results versus a flat track? Now for this test, we've got three tracks of equal length totaling 300 meters. One is straight, the second elevated and curved, and the final track curved but flat. So to start off the straight flat track was able to achieve a throughput of 1,381 items per minute. Whereas the curved track with elevation interestingly was able to achieve an increased throughput of 1,422 items per minute. Now I presume this is because the track is relatively short and the curves are close to the end station acting like a break where a straight tracked train would normally be breaking anyway. Now, if this were a longer track, I presume that the train would slow down considerably as I believe the train is only able to reach the destination in record time because it is able to gain considerable momentum heading downhill. Though this is true for all elevated tracks, the longer the track, the less beneficial this is because as the track evens out, the train decelerates Whereas this track is so small, the train doesn't actually have a chance to slow down enough for it to affect the speed. So for shorter journeys, it may actually be worth using a steady decline towards the station. Just a thought. Now that being said, the curved track on a flat surface suffered a slight detrimental effect associated with the slowing down of the train at curves, arriving three seconds later per lap versus the straight track, causing the throughput to decrease by just under 50 items per minute, giving it a total throughput of 1,333 items per minute. Now this may not sound like a huge reduction, but over longer lengths of track, there will be a considerable difference in throughput and efficiency of the train. Now, what I would like to point out is that we cannot easily create a formula about how much the train's throughput decreases due to the curves or elevation. This is because angle and length of the curve, as well as straight sections in between curves and all the angles of the elevation all affect the outcome. It's very difficult to have a specific formula, or at least uh, for someone who isn't a genius like myself, I can't do it. Um, so looking at all of the results and ensuring that your track is at least 300 meters in length and fed by Mark V conveyors, that the train's throughput would increase by 55 items per 100 meters traveled. So where possible, trains should be used over short to medium distances if you wish to run them at a higher throughput against the conveyor bus. But for much longer distances, you'll either have to add more freights or I'd recommend using conveyors simply because they have a um, unchanging throughput per minute. Now, there was one other important find and that is providing the track is short, inclines and declines in the track can actually be beneficial. However, over long distances, this will start to affect your throughput negatively and the same goes for curves. Now, our last thing to look at is the price to set up against conveyors. Now, we could go into energy consumption, but I feel this is less important and the train tracks are able to transport power across stations, which in itself can be very beneficial. The other thing we are not looking at is the performance on computers, so frames per second issues due to too many conveyors or too many trains. That is something that changes for each person's computer um, and I'm running on a, com um, a laptop, so I'm unable to do a test that really um, tests that um, computing power. But anyway, moving on. Right, so special thanks to Adam for, I don't know if he made it or just sending it through, but sending through this um, spreadsheet that shows um, how the distance affects the price. Um, so if we just, bring this down to eight meters, we can see here that creating a piece of railway costs four iron ore and four coal, which is 
really cheap compared to the Mark 1, Mark 2 or Mark 3 um, or for that matter Mark 4 um, conveyors. However, the issue is that to set up a whole um, railway setup you need not just the railway but also the electric locomotives and you're going to need two of them, a freight car, two freight platforms and two train stations. So what we're going to do is just change these now. So we have two stations, um, two freight platforms, one freight car and two electric locomotives. And now we have the price, if we actually reduce this to zero for a second, here we have the price of everything and then the total amount that we need of iron ore, coal, limestone, limestone and copper. This is quite expensive and the issue is it's expensive to set up um, compared to these Mark uh, 3, Mark 4 conveyors. So what happens if we try and find a balance? Is the throughput of the train going to outweigh the throughputs of the conveyors which we have here? So the Mark 1 we know is 60 items per minute, Mark 2 120, the Mark 3 transports 270 items, Mark 4 480, and then we have the Mark 5 which is a later technology so we don't really want to count this but we will um, and it also uses different items so copper, bauxite and raw quartz so it's not really a fair comparison but we will bear this in mind. Um, so if we go up to here and have a look we will try and compare the um, speed, the, the price of the conveyors versus here. So for 500 meters um, in length, which we're going to need 250 iron ore, 250 coal, plus the original items for the station, it's gonna cost us this much to set up. Whereas to run the um, Mark IV, let's do it, it's 9,000 iron ore, 9,000 coal, 7,500. Um, limestone. So let's try and find an equilibrium where it's actually slightly cheaper to run the station. So if we go to what, 750, I think that would be about right because that would be another 4,500. Um, yeah, so here we are. We have for the Mark IV to run 750 meters. Um, 13,500 iron ore, 13,500 coal, and 11,250 limestone. Which compared to the train station, um, the train setup would be 13,000 iron ore, which is 500 less iron ore, 4,578 coal, considerably less, 4,838 limestone versus 11,000 so again considerably less and then we also have copper which it doesn't use but still 1172 copper is not a lot um, the next thing that we need to do is find out the throughput of the mark uh, of the train station at that distance versus the mark 4 if we go back to the straight line straight flat line test 300 meters away we have had a throughput of 1,381 items per minute. Now that was at 300 meters. So from here, if we take 300 away from 750, it leaves us with 450 meters to, to count towards. Then if we divide 450 meters by 100, because we know how much 100 meters affects approximately the throughput, we have a total of 4.5. Now we need to times this by the, um, the throughput loss, which was 55 items per 100 meters um, per minute, which that would give us uh, 200, 47.5 if I'm correct. Now from this we need to take this number which is the loss of throughput from this number. So we have 1381 247.5 which would give us the throughput of a 750 meter length train system about 1133.5 1, 
five items per minute. I think that's right. Yeah. Um, so, at 1,133.5 items per minute, and comparing that to here, we can see that this train uh, network, at that distance, there's an equilibrium between the, the price of materials, more or less, is actually double the efficiency um, to throughput over the train, um, over the Mark IV conveyor. So let's do the same and compare it versus the Mark III, which obviously uses a lot less items. So we're going to have to add a lot more to the, uh, the train um, distance, which in turn is obviously going to reduce our throughput. So again, let's change this to, I don't know, 1,500. Um, 11,000, okay, so not quite. Let's go to 1,800. Okay, this is this is close enough. Um, so for the Mark III, we have 13,500 iron ore and 13,500 coal. Now, as you can see here, we're spending 25 more in terms of iron ore to produce the train, train network. But at the same time, um, 7,600 less for coal. And then we obviously need to um, cover the limestone and copper, which this doesn't use. But at the same time, it's about equal. Uh, it's also running at 270 items per minute, the Mark III. So let's see what the throughput is for the train station at this distance. So again, we have 1,381 items per minute for 300 meters distance. This is not taking into consideration curves, elevation, um, or even extra freights. So obviously, extra freights are going to give us a higher item output. But we now need to take the total distance, 1,800 meters, then minus the 300 that we already know about, which will leave us with 1,500, nice number. Uh, we divide this by 100, which will give us 15, then times that by 55, which is 825. Um, so, now that we've got this, we're going to take 825 from 1,381, which will leave us with an items per minute throughput of five, 500, 555.5, uh, which as we can see, this number is um, over double again um, versus the conveyor. But to sum everything up, trains can run at a much higher throughput over short to medium distances, but initially cost a lot to set up. However, it is possible over medium distances for the whole train station setup to cost less than conveyors while still having a higher throughput that being said, curves and elevations can play a part as well as the weight of the train if you're using multiple freights, although this is kind of outweighed by the huge increase to uh, throughput. I mean, it's going to be 3,200 items more per freight and the dis difference is about 90 items per 100 meters traveled according to my tests. So you should kind of, you should always be considering these when investing in trains, but ideally what you want to do is run as straight and flat a line as possible. And over much longer distances, we do notice that the throughput of a train decreases considerably. And the only way to really combat this is like we just mentioned with multiple freight cars or conveyor buses until we have a better alternative. Again, special thanks to Adam for sending the uh, spreadsheet through. I don't know if he made it, but thank you very much. We will try and put this on the Discord if that's okay with Adam 
Um, so if you do want to access that, feel free to join our Discord, the link is below. And um, with that all said and done, I hope you guys enjoyed this look at uh, trains versus conveyors in much more detail. Hopefully you found it helpful. If so, please do drop a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Anyway, guys, until next time, thank you so much for watching. Ciao for now.